Hi there, it's been a while. Um, Counting Sheep here, and I wanted to make a video, friend chat, catch up with you, and then kind of show you some of the stuff that I've been playing with lately. I've got to put my phone away. Um, so, I recently got certified in permanent cosmetics because I'm always into something totally different. <laughs> totally new and different. I'll try to remember to look right into the camera. And um, I was just talking with my friend Jennifer today, and um, anyway, we were talking about ASMR and, um, and the permanent cosmetics, because she knows I do it. And I was thinking it would be fun to show you some of the things I've been working on. And, um, and this is my little kit, so I'm going to set it over here on the side and to open it up and then kind of show you some of the things um, I'm not going to give you a treatment today, but maybe sometime I'll give you a permanent cosmetic treatment via ASMR. But um, I'm just going to talk to you about this. So the method that I got certified in is called soft tap. And it's a little different than permanent. It's, it's still permanent tattooing, permanent cosmetics, and some people say it's semi-permanent cosmetics, but you're implanting pigment in the skin. But typically, uh, when it's done with a tattoo gun, it's done at a 90 degree angle, so it goes straight in and it goes pretty deep into the skin. Um, and depending, when I had it done many years ago on my eyebrows, it did some permanent scarring. So somewhere in the 90s, some people got together and were permanent tattoo artists from what my understanding is, and they developed this soft tap method, which is a hand-tooled method, not microblading, but um, you, the, the prongs are at a 45 degree angle and they go into the skin at that angle and then you flick the color into the skin. So it doesn't go quite as deep, it's a little less intrusive. Usually takes two sessions for a good implant. My eyebrows, I'll kind of come close so you can see. I did my second, uh, the first one I had someone else do it, the second one I did my own. And um, they're now about probably three weeks out. So the color's starting to come through. So what happens is it first goes in and it's mi mixing with the bodily fluids and it gets really kind of dark. It oxidizes, gets a little crispy. Somewhere between days four and seven, it sloughs off. And then it looks like you almost didn't have anything done um, because there's a thin protective layer of skin that is over the color. And then the color starts to come through that layer in the next couple of weeks. So Technically, between days 15 to 30, you get more color that starts to come through. So I've done my eyeliner. You can hear the fire, um, fire truck outside. Um, I've done my eyebrows, eyeliner, and first round on my lips. You can barely tell that I've done my lips. They're super bright at first. Um, I, if you're at all interested, I've got an Instagram that's um, Carrie underscore wink and smile because the name of my company is a wink and a smile so um, my Instagram I do lots of you know before and after pictures and I'll talk about it a little bit but I show the day I think it's day two of my lips and they're just like this fiery red and, and they are a little sore right after just like and anything with permanent tattooing is a little sore the next day but um, now you can see that there's just a gentle outline and I like my permanent cosmetics to look more natural. And a lot of people want to look more glamorous and made up. And um, that's certainly something I'm working on too. And, and I'm happy to do that for people. But my uh, preference for me is to have it look a little more natural. I don't have eyebrows. Um, I haven't for years. So I am so thankful to have them tattooed on. Sounds strange, but it's nice not to have them rub off at the end of the day. I have a Marjean video where she jokes about that. So I'm just going to show you some of the stuff because it's super fun. And, um, and this method is soft tap. So for instance, if I were doing your eyebrows, and I have done men's eyebrows, men and women get this done. Um, if I were doing your eyebrows, you do a dry tap first using the prongs. And I'm going to see if you can see the prongs. I don't know if you'll be able to see them up close. This is like a Oh, this is a double layer prong, a 13. So if I were doing an ombre brow, which is where it's um, lighter and then it gets darker and more dense toward the tail, this is the tail of the brow and this is the bulb and the arch 
or the body. Um, so this is the number 13 and you can see in there the pattern of the blades. It's a double row alternating. They're not all in, in line with one another. So I might take that and put it into, I'll show you these little handles, so it's all disposable. I keep forgetting to look here. It's 100% disposable, which is also really nice in terms of, um, you know, sanitization and things that we're a little more concerned about right now. So there's these cool little handles. There's a couple different shapes. This is the fish, um, I can't remember what they call it, the fish handle, fish hook handle. And in the end of it, there's a little opening and you just use one of them and you open up your little prong which is really separate little needles but people are more comfortable hearing prong than needle i'll put my finger behind it or maybe i'll do it this way there we go then you can see it better all right so you can see there at that angle and um so you click it in to the i open it up click it into the handle and then we get the color and first, with the eyebrows, we would do a little bit of um, dry tapping, that's what they call it. Dry tap the eyebrows, and then you put in a gel, um, topical anesthetic, right? And you do about three passes of that and get the gel in there, and then that becomes the uh, number. And um, with eyelids, when I do uh, your eyeliner, permanent eyeliner or lips, you use something called blockade on them, which is a longer lasting um, topical anesthetic. Oops, I got it upside down. It's longer lasting, but you have to leave it on for like 25 minutes, uh, but it really does numb the area first, and you want that with the eyelids and the lips because they're more sensitive. Eyebrows are less sensitive than people think. The whole time you're very careful, like everyone always asks, how painful are the eyeliner, is the eyeliner process? And people are always so surprised at how pain-free it is because we've numbed it first and then I do a pass of color, I do a little cleaning and then a numbing each time and then a pass of color. And that, that numbing in between each one also has, I believe it's got some um, blood restrictive qualities so that it keeps you from excessively bleeding um, because we are going into the skin but anyway um, we put in the numbing and then you start with the color so I was going to show you some of the colors and then when you're done you throw the whole thing away you take the sharps off and put it in a sharps container and you toss out the handle so it's really uh, a sanitary process um, we've got little micro um, I'll show you these this is just a little micro tip, like a mini Q-tip or a mini swab. And um, I'm going to pull one of those out. And I would all do all of this with gloves on. You clean your hands and put on gloves, and I end up having to go through that process several times. Cleaning the hands, throw away the gloves, clean the hands, put on new gloves because you want it to be extremely sanitary when you're working inside of someone's skin. So you can see how tiny that little micro brush is. And that is the brush that I will put in the gel and follow through where I've tapped so that I'm keeping the area numb as I'm working on it. So that's the little micro brush, which is wonderful. Then I take the um, tapping needle um, prongs and there are lots of different colors so I'm going to hold up for eyebrows several colors I have oodles but you're going to see if I put the back side let's see I'll turn it sideways then you can see the color more if you see them on top of each other you'll see that some are warmer toned and cooler toned maybe hard to see in this lighting that's a darker color there's a really light one so if I was working on somebody who was blonde and fair skinned um, I would probably mix a platinum blonde with an earl gray so that I'm getting kind of a neutral, there's a little bit of ash and a little bit of, um, <laughs> I don't know what the glasses on. So I'm just going to hope that I'm pulling the right ones. I think that's earth. Earth is a nice um, 
neutral tone. So some people tend to have their skin holds more green and ash. Some people have more red. So you try to find something that's a little more neutral in between them. So I would mix Platinum Blonde with Earl Grey if you were light skinned. If you're darker skinned and you have, um, I'm trying to find my colors. Earth is one of my favorites. Also charcoal, if I were doing your eyeliner and you're dark skinned, I would probably choose Earth or this one is Earth. Let's see if you can see that. It's a pretty, pretty nice deep brown. There's a little red in there, rich color. They have colors that are chocolate. This one reminds me of a dark chocolate, which I love. But um, there's also, where's my charcoal? Charcoal is a really nice um, one that, that almost looks black on the skin, but it's not quite a black, because the black colors tend to go blue over time in the skin, which most people don't want to have blue tattooing in their skin. So this one um, is the charcoal. And charcoal's really gorgeous on dark skin. And then if somebody wants a little lighter brown in that, then I would go with the earth. Okay, so I like to do the powder brow best, partly because that's, I feel like soft tap is most successful for that. So if somebody has a light brow, whether it be that they just have very little hair, or whether it be that it's just super fine or they're getting older like me and so the hair loss is there more, then I would go with um, backing that powder so that it makes that brow look a lot fuller. For me, I have no brows. Now you can do a 3D brow and I actually have some prongs and it's similar to microblading and microlining. Uh, but what I find is that when it heals over, then for your second time, you have to just keep going in over those lines. So you're kind of going right back in over those grooves. Whereas Soft Tap is, is um, distributing the pigment a little more evenly. Now that 3D brow is gorgeous. Um, and I think there are 3D brow artists out there who are phenomenal and it looks like real hair. But I find that it, when it heals over, it just loses that definition. Uh, and I'm, there's probably some of you watching this that are wonderful um, 3D brow artists who can say, no, this, I, you know, I've had great results and they look fabulous long after. Um, and I wish I could do that. But I'm finding that I'm most successful at the, the powder, the powder brow, which is what I have. So here's the process of the healing. So you put them on all this, you tapped in all the color you keep cleaning and you keep numbing and then finally the brows are about where you want them. So then you put on an ointment and this is the one that Soft Tap recommends, it's Recoverall. And sometimes people will have a reaction to some of the stuff in there. There's Malaleuca oil or tea tree oil in there. There's some things that are stronger herbal um, ointment inside of the ointment. And so if you have a reaction, then you can use aquaphor or coconut oil. But you put this on, a very nice thin layer, and then you just keep putting on ointment for a few days. And eventually, the outer layer sloughs off. It's basically scabbing up and sloughing off. And everybody's skin is a little different than that. Some people get a, a real um, a yellowy layer because their lymph system is clearing things out because your body is trying to kick out the color. And some people have very little reaction and, and, and very light sloughing. So after that sloughing, then it looks like you have, haven't had any work done. And that's the hard part for people because everybody, no matter what you, know, you tell them and you give them the form that shows them the process, we all still kind of panic when we go through that phase, including myself, like, oh no, is that color going to come back? But then the color comes through. And then what's nice, like for my first one, I did that mix that I told you about for the lighter skin. I did the, um, the Earl Grey mixed with the Platinum Blonde, but it was a little too light. Um, so I did what was called brown sugar this time. And it's probably going to be even a hair darker than what I have now. Um, lighter here in the bulb area and you can see it darkens a little as I go out to the tail. The tail wants to be more defined. But that is what happens and then on days 15 to 30 the color starts to come through that 
dermal epidermal layer and show up more. Um, and obviously we don't want it to come all the way out the epidermis because then you're going to lose it all um, and we want to keep that color in there. So your second, your touch up is where you can get a little more extravagance. You can go with a darker color or maybe you want to add more red to the color or you know, you want to add, you want a little bolder, or um, I, I did a little more ombre effect on my second one than I did with the um, linear. There's needles. I'll show you. There's some needles that are there's that's almost a rectangular pattern. If you look here, that shows you the pattern of the needle and how many needles. That's how many needles are in there. Um, oh, that is a round one, isn't it? No. 84. Now that's the rectangle. So that's one that we would use for the lips. And the needles can be very fine. Or the needles can be regular, which is a little thicker. The thicker can be nice if you want a smudgier look in the eyeliner. Um, or a more feathery look in the lips. And then you use a finer, tighter needle if you want it to be more dense, packed in color or pigment. What else can I show you? Um... I'm just loving it. Uh, it's hard to start a new business and to build, you know, after you've gone through families and friends, um, to, to get it to where you're still pulling in. So I've got my Instagram going and working on getting people, you know, getting clients and keeping that going. But I was just going to show you a little bit of the color for the lips, which is the one that I did most recently. Uh, and if you look on my website, Wink and Smile PMU, which means permanent makeup, so Wink and Smile PMU.com, I've got a gallery, which I love looking at people's before and after pictures. So if you want to see some of my clients' before and after pictures, check it out. These are the colors that we use for the lips. There's lots of them. But um, this particular one, this is what I mixed for mine, was cognac and cranberry. And I'm going to show you the bottoms so you can kind of see the differences in the color. One has a lot more of that bright red in it. And then the cognac, which is this one, is a little more neutral. That has, um, it really actually looks almost similar to my real lip tone. So I wanted more red in there because I watched some of the girls. I didn't do my lips during the class. Everyone else did. And a lot of people, you lose more color in your lips than you do in any other part of the uh, facial permanent cosmetics. So the lips slough off about 50% of the color and the eyebrows and the eyelids are more like 20 to 40%. So the lips want to get rid of anything that's in there. So you have to go a little more often, probably two or three times a year, if you want to keep that color packed in the lips. Whereas eyebrows and eyelids, if you go for your touch up and you get a couple rounds, Sometimes they can, you can go a couple years. If it's a darker color, some people even go five years before they need to have a refresher. So it really can be um, a, a wonderful, I love it for the simplicity because I get up, I shower, um, I, I can put on my lotions. You do want to keep like uh, sloughing things that are exfoliants. You don't want those on the eyebrows and things because that makes you exfoliate the color. But you can put it on the rest of your face. And I just put on a little bit of Vaseline or lip gloss and mascara and I'm good. Um, I used to take forever doing my eyebrows and getting the right color and getting the right thickness and width and getting them even and it was just so much work and I don't have to worry about that. So I love it. To me it's such a gift in simplicity. You can get more, um, you know, there's people who want a lot more wing on their eyeliner and um, I went with more of a teal color, but you can go with, you know, you can get more smoky, um, you can get more smoky black or smoky gray, charcoal colored. You can get more greens. I've done some where it's kind of more of an olive green as it heals, which is kind of neat depending on your eye color and what you want. And um, I like to not get too extreme with anybody, and especially on the first visit, because it's going to be with you. So if you think about it, you know, you may change your taste in a while. So it's, for me, it's simple to, you know, keep it a little more conservative for a second round if you want to boost it up a little bit, but keep it simple so that if you change your style or your taste, or if you have a night where you want to be more extravagant, you can, you've got your 
um, outline there that makes it so easy. But if you just want to wake up in the morning and have it be easy and still look somewhat natural, it's really, really wonderful. So that's my permanent makeup gig that I'm doing. Um, it's so different than anything I've ever done. And, um, and I get a little terrified before every session. And then I feel so, I had one woman just crying. Um, I held her, handed her the mirror and she looked at herself and she said, oh, I didn't know what I was missing. And she just started to cry. And she said, I just need to take a minute. She said, I've never been the pretty one. <laughs> and I had just done her eyebrows. And she, she just not had eyebrows for much of her life. She's gorgeous redhead and it looked just beautiful on her. So um, it was fun. I, I love that part. I'm, I do honestly believe that it, it's about how we feel about ourselves. Some people feel better about themselves with a lot of makeup, you know, being really, um, um, what's the word, glamorous or really just made up. I, 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 you, can, you can do that in a million ways. Some people want it just to be very light and um, fresh and natural looking and, um, and, and you know what? Just feeling good about yourself, whatever that is. And I, I don't have a judgment about that. If, if that's wearing a lot of makeup, if that's wearing no makeup, if you feel good about yourself, that is really all that matters and that is what is beautiful. I happen to be one who likes to put on a little bit of makeup and I don't like the hassle of it, but I feel better if I have on a little mascara and if I see my eyebrows. So I'm a perfect candidate for permanent makeup. Um, but um, yeah, it's important for me that people not feel like it's, uh, it matters at all in terms of their self-esteem and their who they are. But if it does boost your self-esteem and make you feel better to wear makeup, to not wear makeup, um, do it. Do whatever makes you feel good. Uh, that's my little doodad on um, permanent makeup. And um, I think that's all. I'll just put away my kit. Oops. I'll show you. It's kind of fun. I can do that without causing everything to fall out. It has these fun little sliding. drawers, kind of. That one has two on that side. And then it just all folds up and I take it to my little salon. I rent a salon space with another gal. And I'm definitely only part-time right now. It would be lovely if this could become a full-time, you know, pay the bill kind of career. But it is helping me because I'm only part-time right now with what I do as my regular job, so this is really a nice, nice thing to be able to pick up on and to, to do. So I'm just going to hold it up here and do a little scratching and tapping and then I'll say goodnight to you. Um, that's what's been going on with me. Maybe while I'm doing this you can tell me a little bit about what's been going on with you. It's been a pretty turbulent time. The world is polarized and so many extremes of things going on. I hope you feel safe. I'm going to look at you here. I hope you feel safe. I hope you feel loved. I hope you feel... I hope you know that you're valuable and that you are important and that it's important that you're on the planet here at this time with me. I'm grateful for that. And... Um, I'm grateful for you at all times, in all spaces. Um, yeah, I just uh, I want everyone to just love who they are and value who they are and what they bring to the table. And I dream of a time when we all treat each other with respect and love and um, softness, kindness. I think we could use more softness in the world. I notice even myself getting more bristly than I usually do. Um, feeling more defensive about things. 
love in Dailan for a time when we just feel love when we see one another. And when we just feel like we're all connected. We're all brothers and sisters here on this planet together. That's the world I want to live in. And that's the world I hope that we're all creating, that we're all working toward making each other feel loved and welcomed and valuable. Tell me about you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And um, if you need to rewind this and share a little more, I would love to be here for you and hold that space for you. Um, it's important to feel heard and uh, I am happy to hear you, <laughs> to listen. So please feel free. and. Um, if you're signing off for the night, then I just want to thank you, sorry, for being with me, for listening to my crazy new adventure that I love. And, uh, and it's been a while, so thanks for stopping by, and uh, I hope you have a peaceful, restful evening. Good night.